If 2020 was the year of the pandemic, may 2021 be the year we won the race to save lives. Every vulnerable person inoculated against the coronavirus is a small victory en route to the day when herd immunity will get the better of COVID-19. So why are the French so slow out of the starting blocks? As of the weekend, less than 500 jabs had been administered here, while Germany was already up to 250,000 and 1 million in the UK. We'll ask about the French government's rethink of its cautious strategy and what the rollout of vaccines from rival pharmaceutical labs means. Which is the best? One shot or two? How fast can we get to that herd immunity? And how to, well, keep reminding ourselves that vaccine nationalism won't work. For humanity to succeed, it's got to be one for all and all for one. On that score here in France, mistrust of authority and anti-vaxxers seem to abound. How to convince skeptics that the jab is both safe and necessary. Today in the France 24 debate, we're asking about the rollout of the COVID vaccine. Joining us from the uh, western French city of Rennes, Dr. Pierre Tatvin, who heads the Infectious Disease Department at uh, Rennes University Hospital, president of the French Society uh, for, of Infectious Diseases. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. Olga Givernet is a member of parliament for Emmanuel Macron's La République En Marche party, representing uh, the district of uh, Lain in the center of France. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Jérôme Martin, co-founder of the Observatory for Transparency on Meds, joins us. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And we say Happy New Year to uh, commentator and entrepreneur Jakob Hessler. Hi. The France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag FP4Debate. <clears throat> yeah, the first working day of 2021, begetting the first crisis cabinet meeting of the year for the French government. The Berstecker explains. Lining up for their jabs, French healthcare workers aged 50 and over became eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine on Monday. A way for these medical professionals to lead by example, and to reassure skeptical patients. Pendant tout le mois de décembre, ils me posaient des questions sur euh, ce que je pensais du vaccin. Donc je leur disais que euh, dès que le vaccin serait disponible, moi je me ferais vacciner. D'abord pour leur montrer l'exemple et ensuite euh, pour euh, effectivement euh, montrer que le, le vaccin est, est efficace et, et bien toléré. A week has passed since France kicked off its vaccination campaign against COVID-19. But it's been lagging far behind other countries, with an average of only 50 vaccines administered daily, compared to around 20,000 in Germany and up to half a million in the U.S. Faced with mounting pressure and criticism, French authorities recently decided to speed up the campaign and vowed Monday the country would soon catch up to its European neighbors. Je peux vous dire qu'aujourd'hui, nous aurons réalisé plusieurs milliers de vaccinations dans tout le pays. Ça va monter en puissance. Emmanuel Macron, who has repeatedly defended the government's vaccination strategy, reportedly lost his temper on Sunday and slammed the sluggish pace at which the vaccine was being rolled out. The president met with top officials and ministers on Monday to discuss and reevaluate France's vaccination campaign. Before we turn to our panel, let's go to the French presidential palace. France 24's Claire Pacalin is there. Uh, Claire, how much pressure is there on the French government? In a word, Francois, massive, massive pressure. Um, this cautious, well thought out approach, which was the initial approach we were seeing from the French government, which may have been to reassure members of the French public, as we know that there is a not so enthusiastic feeling towards this new vaccine among some members of the French public. An Ipsos poll actually showed that four out of 10 French people said they didn't intend to get the vaccine at all. However, that government idea just backfired because we've had doctors and nurses going on television, speaking on French radio in the last few days saying, hold on, I'm on the front line, where's my vaccine? So that meeting taking place just behind me in the Elysee Palace really is an attempt by the government to rethink its strategy. How can it rethink its strategy in order to make sure that France doesn't fall even more behind? Because the numbers speak for themselves. Only 500, slightly more than 500 French vaccinations have been taken place. Now, that number will be updated tomorrow morning, I should stress, because the health minister, Olivier Véran, who was, of course, in that meeting, 
He said a little earlier on today that thousands, several thousand vaccinations have been carried out today. So we are going to get more data tomorrow morning. But France is well behind its European neighbours. Germany at a quarter of a million. The UK at a million vaccines now administered. So the government has to rethink its approach. Has to rethink its approach. And just very briefly, Claire, what are some of the uh, options that they have? Well, there are several options on the table. They could also go down the UK route, which is considering with the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine when really the first jab takes place and then a few weeks later the second one takes place. The UK is considering now to actually spread that out and that second jab taking place more like three months after the first one. That would mean more people could be vaccinated at one time. Another approach that the French government is now, this is something that Olivier Véron, the health minister, announced earlier on, while initially it was to be GPs, so local doctors in towns and villages and cities across France, they had initially been the ones to carry out this vaccination on their patients. Now the French health minister says that as of Wednesday, 100 vaccination centres will be open. So there again, we're seeing a switch in tactic. The other thing that the French government could do is simply start showing a little bit more enthusiasm, enthusiasm excuse me, for this vaccine because French people, we do know that there is this reluctance, this slight reticence towards this new jab. But clearly this issue with France being well behind its European neighbours is causing a stir here in France. All right, Claire Pacalin reporting live there from uh, the French presidential palace. Let's get the reaction now of our panel. I'll begin with you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Tadvin. You, you, your thoughts on uh, uh, the French rethinking their strategy on the go? Well, I, I think it was explained very clearly by, by your, your, um, your journalist. I think we, we were too slow at the beginning, uh, but it, it really reacted quite fast because just three days after the beginning of the campaign in France, uh, thanks to um, Emmanuel Macron, who, uh, as you said, he lost his temper about the too slow pace of the vaccination campaign. It really begins to, to speed up the process and we can see it uh, in our hospitals. So we are beginning to, to vaccinate much more faster than, uh, than by last week. And just to that second point, uh, uh, the fact that the government because there are a lot of people who are skeptical, wanted to proceed with caution, but that caution may have backfired. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. For example, they decided that you would need to give the approval for the vaccine five days before you receive the shot. And this was really not practical. And in addition, it, it makes the people think that it's a very dangerous vaccine, which actually we have no reason to think that it's dangerous. So they have to simplify the process. Olga Givernet, we remember Emmanuel Macron speaking in a, a nationally televised broadcast when he, he insisted on the fact that, of course, it won't be mandatory. Why are, why are the French so skeptical when it comes to vaccines? I, I don't know because I'm very much into vaccines and I try to uh, make them com confident about the, the vaccine. So I think we have to uh, go on the field now and uh, show that it's not dangerous, that show that it's safe and that also it is to protect the health of the French. Uh, also um, show that it will save the economy at the end when uh, we manage to uh, uh, beat this virus. So today we have to speed up the process, definitely. Um, the, it is uh, at the moment uh, uh, in the administration, everyone is working at it and I'm sure tomorrow we will have a better uh, numbers, figures to uh, to show that uh, it has increased uh, the number of vaccination. Uh, at the moment, we have to make sure that our uh, health services are all um, fully into work to get the, all the vaccines in uh, everywhere in France. And make sure that people and um, all the uh, hospital and also everyone uh, in the senior in institution um, are ready to uh, uh, do the vaccine to everyone who wants to do it. And what are your constituents telling you when you see them where you are in the center eastern part of, uh, uh, of France? Are they more of the I don't want to take it variety or are they more of the I want it now kind? 
how the all the feedback I have for a few days, I already spe be speaking that uh, how can we do it? That's the question. Um, we don't. I don't hear much more of uh, the one who don't want to do it. It's not mandatory anyway. So uh, let's uh, let's go with uh, everyone who wants to show. Um, the, their will to, to do it. And I am also, we have a, um, a discussion about all the elected people, all the member of parliament as well, who wants to get the vaccine as well, to, to show that it is safe and make sure that everyone um, wants to do it at honest time. So, Jérôme Martin, what is it about the French? Why are they more skeptical than some of their neighbors? I think that... The problem is not only the, the anti-vaccine, the problem is the political disorganization since the beginning of the crisis. Um, as a net activist in Actor Paris, I've been fighting uh, during years against a uh, lack of political well, uh, disorganization, uh, lack of funding. I've never seen what's happening now. I've never seen what's happening since March, since last March. For months, we are advocating for transparency on research and funding and research. Last March, Emmanuel Macron should have implemented a citizen committee with representative of NGOs to elaborate a strategy. Why are we waiting last January to have a citizen committee? Why are we waiting the 24th December to send a letter to the director of the uh, um, nursing homes to say, oh, that's how we can vaccinate. Because the, the short answer is, is that France is a very top-down country where we wait for the orders from above. Yes, but people are dying. The, uh, Oliver Given had just said uh, two minutes ago, or maybe tomorrow, maybe everything at this time, how many people are going to die when we can't save their lives? I mean, I'm sorry to be so angry, but in Actor Paris, we knew that anger is political. No, it's not true that we can wait. We have the way to vaccine and to save lives. We heard our correspondent Jakob Hessler saying how uh, there's going to be several thousand before the, uh, for just for Monday and that yep. the numbers are going to go up steadily. Well, at the end of the day, will this all blow over? Will this just be a storm in a teacup? Well, or, no, think, or is the fact that... I think that, that there's a problem, and I think you pointed it out. There's, something is, there's a problem with the process, which is that... You know, even, I mean, in Germany, even in Germany, people are complaining that things are too slow. They published in November the vaccine strategy. All federal regions had to implement their vaccination centers, get ready, because you don't only distribute the vaccine. You have to make sure you have the right needles, you have the right dissolvents, you have all these additional products, which had to be, and the irony is, for once, France didn't do it top down. It was supposed to be much more decentralized. If you have GPs and pharmacies to deliver a vaccine that has to be cooled at minus 60 or minus 70, that is, of course, a huge logistical challenge. If your administrative territories for the distribution don't match your distribution territories for your doctors, that's going to be really difficult. The doctor capacities are, I mean, a lot of the problems are not the problem of the strategy. The strategy in France is the same, I think, as everywhere, which is take at-risk populations first, and that's right. And actually, in these at-risk populations, the anti-vax percentage, because they're older, is probably very low. I don't think it's that... And maybe people were too cautious because the anti-vax in, movement in general. But with these people... I don't think that there's a huge problem of elderly at risk people refusing to be vaccinated. And so I think we got into this clogged up process, the five days, the logistic problem of the distribution, which is very difficult but when you, you have a decentralized process. You heard Dr. Tadvan at the outset yeah. say they're now owning the approach. Yeah, they're now course. changing their. So uh, will those couple of days matter in the end? Well, they may matter because it's about communication and about trust and it's about how whether you feel once again being let down. You say once again after the mask, after the test, now it's the vaccine. It's it's I think it's a it's more of a political risk. And you know, and the question is you'll you'll have to catch up fast because putting in place the vaccine center so that you can I mean when you look at the percentages of the population, you have now 0.3% in, of the population in many European countries. And until you get that in France, it's going to take a little while. Uh, so it's going to be catch up and 
you know, at some point we need to step up one more and maybe add a second vaccine, maybe add the, the, the AstraZeneca Oxford, which is cheaper, easier to distribute, needs less cold to have a, you know, a multi-product strategy. All right, lots of questions on the back of that. Uh, Dr. Tedva, the, just a brief one before we go to the break, and then we'll pick up on it. Uh, this, this question that we're seeing over in the UK of uh, perhaps delaying the second shot, that booster shot uh, for the uh, Pfizer vaccine, you for or against that? Well, I, I think it's a good idea, but uh, we will have the opportunity to study what they will find in the, in the UK because they began one month before us. So we will learn from their experience, and I'm sure, because they know how to work, they will communicate about the, the scientific data that uh, allows to delay the second shot. And, and if it's convincing, I, I'm almost sure that we will do as they did. We, ha we have the advantage that we are coming one month after them, so we have the opportunity to use their experience, and I hope we'll do. All right, we're going to pick up on that point. When we come back, stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate and uh, we're seeing how France is having to roll with the punches or rather the jabs, if you will. Uh, what uh, with the COVID vaccine rollout going slower than in neighboring countries. Uh, with us to talk about it from Rennes, Dr. Pierre Tadvin, who heads the Infectious Diseases uh, Department at uh, Rennes uh, Teaching Hospital there, president of the French Society for Infectious Diseases. Uh, joining us uh, from her home constituency in Lain, Olga Givernet, uh, member of parliament uh, for Emmanuel Macron's La République En Marche party here in the studio. We're in the company of Jérôme Martin, co-founder of the Observatory for Transparency on Meds. And... Uh, economist, uh, but rather entrepreneur and commentator, uh, Jakob Hessler is with us as well. We were saying in part one, the French president, critical of his own government uh, over the weekend, Emmanuel Macron quoted in Sunday newspaper, Le Journal du Dimanche, as uh, saying uh, that uh, our pace is that of a family stroll, and that meets neither the standards of these times uh, nor of the French. Uh, well, let me ask you, uh, Olga Givernet, uh, isn't that passing the buck a bit uh, when he comes up with a statement like that? Well, we can uh, we, we, we can have some expressions saying also that uh, we don't want to have the vaccine um, sleeping in uh, some uh, freezer. So uh, definitely we need to make pressure and, and make sure that all the... Uh, um, all the services and administration take the opportunity to get the this vaccine done uh, quickly. Um, and I would like to uh, reply to uh, some of the other member of uh, this uh, TV. Uh, we need to catch up definitely and catch up really quickly in the next couple of uh, weeks. And by the end of January, I'm really sure that we will be to the same amount of vaccines that uh, all the other country. And I would like to remind that also in, in Spain, um, we the, the, there was reluctancy about the vaccine and now they've started the process and people are getting used to it. And I will expect that uh, in, in France as well, uh, as we show people and as, as we show that we are getting also the vaccine um, the other, other one uh, will be uh, trusting the processes and, and will uh, want to do the vaccine as well. All right. Yeah, it's all about how fast you go. Uh, the head of France's Health Oversight Authority uh, defending the government decision in an interview with Breakfast Radio. Let's listen. Cela oui. ne change pas qu'il faut garder son calme et oui. garder les priorités parce que, je vous explique, si on vaccine beaucoup mais pas les bons, on va mettre des mois à diminuer les hospitalisations et les décès. Regardez ce qui se passe en Angleterre ou aux états unis vous avez vu le nombre de décès qu'ils ont tous les jours. Donc si on veut ils diminuer... C'est pour accélérer la vaccination Oui, bah, oui ils n'ont pas le choix. Hein. Oui, si... oui d'accord, mais nous non plus, si on, on veut... a le choix Est-ce qu'on a le choix, Non, non, on n'a pas le choix. On n'a bon. pas le choix, il Donc faut vacciner. Donc on doit vacciner vite On doit vacciner vite ceux qui en ont le plus besoin. Jérôme Martin, your reaction uh, of course, we have to vaccine uh, every people who need it. And there was a strategy that was announced at the beginning of December. Uh, uh, this strategy could have been prepared months 
months ago, months ago, uh, with as a little transparency, uh, not a little transparency, with full transparency on the studies of the of the, uh, of the essays. Uh, in March, the government should have uh, elaborated uh, different uh, solutions for strategy for vaccinate. Right now, we are just reacting. Oh, there is a problem of uh, with freezing. Oh. Let's wait. Oh, there is a problem with distribu distributing the vaccine. Oh, let's wait. There is no planning. So, of course, we need to vaccine uh, older people, people, vulnerable people. But where is the, the strategy? To Let me bring in Dr. Tadva on this because, uh, and Jakob Hessler was here when we were discussing treatment and when we were discussing testing back in the spring. That was the main criticism that, uh, that the government uh, didn't bring in all the actors of the healthcare system uh, into the uh, into the discussion. You're hearing the charge there from Jérôme Martin that the lessons of the spring have not been learned when it comes to being more inclusive. Do you agree? Well, I, I agree that we uh, did not have a good start for this vaccine campaign, but I uh, I don't think it's um, it, it's something we can catch up quite fast because, for example, the freezers now they are everywhere, and just a few days after Emmanuel Macron say we have to speed up, we are already uh, ready to to do that. We have the freezer, we have the vaccine, we have. Uh, uh, the process in place. So I think it, it was not good last week. We were too slow, and and it it should have been better. But we can we can really uh, catch up quite fast. And I'm confident, like like uh, Olga Giverne say, that that we can have a good uh, good numbers of people uh, immunized by the end of this month. We are right. not that late. But, Jacob but the, the damage, I think that I, I agree with you. But I think the damage is political. The damage is political in the sense that it took massive protest by the Paris University Hospital doctors and others to get Alain Fischer to agree. Who's that Alain Fischer? Remind Alain Fischer is the sort of the, the vaccine pope, or the head of vaccine programs of the French government, mm -hmm. to actually agree that the frontline medical workers above 50 would get the vaccine. Now. That wasn't originally planned. And so when you add all those things together, the real issue to me is not so much the, I mean, the public health issue is one and we can catch up, but it's the political capital that gets burned every day. And there's going to be elections someday and there is going to be a payday. And, and, and that's what I am personally worried about, worried about as a consequence. I partly agree with you that the main damage is probably political, uh, but the good point we can see from that we just had is that the government was able to react very fast. They did the wrong start, but three days after, when the people came to, to protest that it was too slow, they were able to change the plans quite fast. And that's, that's the positive things. But I agree with you that the political damage is something we have to consider. Well, I, I would like to remind, sorry um, to interrupt, but um, that uh, the government was also listening to people they were reluctant to uh, the vaccine and we needed a full uh, uh, public opinion addition to start this vaccination uh, process. So, uh, uh, but the government also has planned everything because we have the, the same amount of doses and it was all uh, um, negotiated with the uh, European, I would like to uh, salute to uh, uh, th this uh, strategy to do with all the other countries as well. Um, so we're not missing any vaccine because we will have a million by uh, by end of uh, January and and 2.6 million doses uh, by uh, by the beginning of, uh, of February. So uh, there's no missing. It's just a few days that we have to keep up. There's no uh, political effect for a long. -term. Yeah. It's just that we have to be uh, listening to everyone and now make sure that uh, uh, the debate is on the table and then the public opinion is uh, has uh, all the adhesion to doing the vaccine process. Well, Olga Givernet, here in France, we've watched in awe as uh, German authorities uh, turned uh, a former terminal at Berlin's Tegel Airport into what's being called a vaccinodrome with inoculations dispatched uh, uh, across the capital region. And even so, uh, we had reports this Monday 
countries like uh, Germany and Denmark, uh, where citizens think it's still not going uh, fast enough. We heard the health minister earlier, uh, Olga, saying how he was against this uh, idea of following that German model of the vaccinodromes. And uh, your, your thoughts on that? Uh, we are the time for the moment that we need information. People need information. They need to trust the process. So uh, let's take them to somewhere they know. Um, hospital, uh, being in their uh, senior in an institution as well, so they feel more confident. But I wish uh, in the future, in the next few weeks, that uh, uh, the process uh, uh, being easier and th that we could, could have some uh, uh, this type of centre that uh, welcome everyone and, and do a a faster job, but at this stage, I uh, I agree with the uh, government strategy to to make sure that people are confident uh, being uh, doing this uh, this vaccine. Jérôme Martin, your thoughts when you compare France and Germany? Oh, I mean, so um, I cannot. Well, I don't know what to say. You're, we are talking about political damages, and people are dying. I mean, first, that's the first point. Uh, I mean, people are dying. So, if Macron is not elected again in two years, that's not my problem. There is here. I mean, we are talking about lives, about human lives, about health. The, Emmanuel Macron has not done everything he could to save lives. That's all the point. You're talking, uh, Olivier, um, the, the deputy and the doctor saying, oh, uh, thanks to Macron, he said two days ago, so things are spinning up. But so what now? Why Macron didn't organize things one month ago, two months ago, three months ago? If his words is so magical, it's incredible. We are talking about human lives. Where is the transparency and the studies? What is the strategy if Sanofi is issuing a new French product, pharmaceutical uh, company. French pharmaceutical company is issuing a, a new product uh, with less side effects, more efficient? And Why, and uh, where is the strategy? Where are the scenarios? Where are the different scenarios? Where is the discussion with the civil society? <clears throat> Tomorrow there is there's supposed to be in one week, two weeks, a citizen committee. Where are the health NGOs? Where are the people who have an experience? Uh, of public health. But I, th but I, th but I think, and I, and I don't want to defend Macron, but I think it is unfair to, s to blame the person and his willingness or his sincerity of his attempt to act and the fact that the system is what it is, it, it can do what it can do, and it can't do what it can't do. And I think the, the real question is what can we learn? What can the system learn? And how can we make sure that the system learns from these things and gets better? And that, you know, in some instances, we did learn. So the, the whole hospitalization of COVID at the second wave was, it's not only that we knew better how to treat them in the hospital, but we knew better how to deal with how do, what do we do if someone comes and has symptoms, doesn't have symptoms, whom do we send to the hospital, whom do we send, how do we use the GPs, which was something that didn't work in the first wave. Can we, could it have done better? Yes, of course. And there will probably always be things and people who do better. And, and, and I agree with you, it's about the lives. My comment about the political damage wasn't to say that there are no lives being lost. My point was in terms of the catching up of the vaccination campaign, will be so, if they do it well, that the health effect will not be very large. So ultimately, the health effect on the rest, of course, is large, but not from the speeding up of the vaccination campaign, but the political capital that again is lost by lack of transparency, lack of communication, lack of honesty about when they make a mistake. It's always the same thing. It's like when you make a mistake, you say you make a mistake. And if you don't, then next time people don't believe. And then you need to spend all this cap political capital again to make people trust you again. And we are in that kind of cycle, which is very unproductive for society because it doesn't allow for learning as fast as possible so that, you know, the vaccine gets faster and that, you know, the Sanofi vaccine, when it comes, there was this tweet by the Minister of Research, Frédéric Vidal, who tweeted something, oh, the strategy is right, France will get another vaccine some later point, which probably, I'm sure she didn't mean to say that France is holding back the Pfizer vaccine just to wait for Sanofi. Of course, France is not doing that. But such a tweet 
in the age of social media is really not helpful. Let's put it that way. And there, there's an, is there an element, uh, Pierre Tadvin, of, uh, of vaccine nationalism of a different kind? Uh, mo for most of us from the general public, we didn't even know the names of these pharmaceutical companies until this pandemic. Uh, now there's uh, those who have an opinion on the Pfizer one, on the Moderna one. We saw the UK uh, this Monday, the first to administer to the general public uh, uh, the uh, vaccine developed by Oxford University and the British pharmaceutical giant uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, are you concerned that uh, there's going to be sort of uh, favoritism over the brand of the vaccine? Uh, no, I don't think so, because actually even you cannot say that we could have access to any other vaccine earlier than what we had. Even in the yeah. European Union, nobody got the vaccine before the very late end of December. So maybe we lost a few days, but it's not because we were waiting for a French vaccine. It's just that it was yeah. not available in the European Union before the end of December. Uh, so I don't think nationalism has something to 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 do with this. Uh, uh, but if there, but if Sanofi, the French company, did put send one to market, would you be saying c'est la France? We have to go with the Sanofi one. Personally, not, and I don't think it really was the main problem for our our slow no. start. It was mostly because of the vaccine hesitancy, and probably because we have not been uh, too. Um, uh, uh, with a strong political will to start this uh, this vaccine fast. But now we have it. We didn't have it one week ago, but we can feel a strong political will to have a quick start. So I think that was the main reason why we were slow. It was a lack of uh, a political will to start fast. And, and at, at the initiative of France, um, the uh, the European negotiation was launched. So um, France cannot say that we prefer a French vaccine now. We uh, just make sure that everyone has uh, the same. Um, the, the thing is, we were on holiday. Uh, we tried to save Christmas, doing some testing before, make sure that people are safe when they're meeting their family as well. And also we have the New Year's Eve, making sure that... Uh, um, we didn't have any big parties that will uh, launch again uh, the uh, epidem epidemic. So um, now we are into uh, the next step. We are into the new year with new tool. New tool is a vaccine, and we have to make make people understand that it is a way out. It is our way out to the uh, this crisis, and we have to save our economy. And uh, now, if we take some uh, measure in the few next uh, uh, days uh, or weeks to uh, to make sure people are safe. Also, we have to combine it to uh, our explanation of the vaccination, that uh, by uh, spring uh, we have a visibility and we are pretty much out of uh, this epidemic. Jérôme Martin, you heard Olga Giverny there mentioning the, the pan-European approach. Is what we're witnessing in France an argument for more powers to a European health authority or for well, less? Why not? Why not? But the problem is not here. The first problem is the transparency on the research that we are funding. You were talking about Sanofi. The problem of Sanofi is not nationalism. It's not because it's also funded by public, by American public money. So Donald Trump funded, uh, granted a lot of money to, to Sanofi. But the problem is that we decided to create a race, a vaccine race, the first with coming, the first with issuing, wind. But with this model, we cannot think collectively of a combinated approach. This vaccine is good for this kind of people in such occasion. This other vaccine is good here and here. So Pfizer is coming. We say, oh, Pfizer, we, are, we have to do this, 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 and this. And Moderna is coming. Oh, we have to do this, 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 and this. Instead of planning this months ago with the result of the, of, the, of the studies. But we didn't have the studies fast enough. And I think, and I think, I mean, I'm not an epidemiologist, but I've done enough math. The kind of relative, when you look at the sample sizes for the tests, I mean, already the AstraZeneca fact that you, you get a better result at half dose is more the accident of the, the setup for the, uh, for the trials. I'm not sure it would have been possible to 
get a more refined deployment strategy by vaccine. And it was a race. Because we've done it in record time. We, yeah, we've done it in record we, time. Oh, Never has a vaccine been that. developed and so quickly. And we have two RNA, which have RNA messenger vaccine, which is Moderna and Pfizer, which use similar technologies. So we have two and we can see. And they have a, roughly the same um, impact, actually, when you look at it. You have a more conventional one with AstraZeneca, and you have a fourth one, Sanofi, which is also, if I understand it correctly, I'm mm. not an expert, a more conventional one. But in the end, when you think about the whole world that needs to be vaccinated, the fact that we start with the one that maybe cost 20 euros a shot, and we end up with one that costs, now we have AstraZeneca is 8 euros a shot, and it can be cooled at, uh, at normal fridge temperature, you know, if you want to vaccine the, vaccinate the world, you need some of this. So I think there is plenty of room to have many races, you know, if it's for this. And the fact, yes, that governments may have spent hundreds of millions of euros, if they hadn't spent them, nobody would have understand. Nobody would have understood and accept. People would have said, how dare you? We need to spend. We don't know who will win. We need to place our bets on everyone, which is why Sanofi got money from the US, from right. Europe, and everyone got money from everyone, basically. And we didn't know. I mean, they built up in, production. In time. They built up production capacity for the vaccine yeah. when we didn't even know whether it would work. It could have been very well that we would have ended up with factories producing vaccine that no one wants. And that was a risk that we took deliberately. And I think that was a good risk to take. I personally think. All right. Otherwise, we wouldn't be where we are today. It is a work in progress, and uh, it's just the start. I want to thank you so much, Jacob Hessler. I want to thank as well uh, Jérôme Martin, Olga Givernet, for being with us uh, from her home constituency dans l'Ain, and Pierre Tadvin, Dr. Pierre Tadvin, uh, from the Brittany uh, city of Rennes. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.